The desktop Steam client gets a massive Steam Deck update that includes a feature that we've been missing since day one. And new features are coming in the Steam Deck ecosystem. Do you hear that? It sounds like Steam Deck news time. So I wonder if you've heard about this. Electronic Arts has been hard at work griefing PC gamers with the new EA app. And many of their popular titles have received updates that have rendered otherwise verified or playable titles broken. And there's been a groundswell of irritation uh, from the public with the infamous publishing firm. So much so that Valve's got a new version of Proton Experimental that should fix the issue. Now the change log for the new version of Proton lists, quote, fixed the new EA launcher displaying a blank window, among many other uh, changes to Proton. And this is great to see. Valve is super responsive to changes uh, on Steam and to community complaints. But can we all just stand in awe at the tremendous work Valve has been doing with Proton? It just works for so many games and they're super responsive when things break like this. Kudos to them. Okay, next up, a Microsoft employee has announced a small change to Xbox Cloud Gaming that improves Linux and Chrome OS game streaming. Now, this is something that many folks have actually complained about since before this update, cloud streaming through this service was limited to a fairly low resolution on Linux. There were ways to work around this issue, namely spoofing your browser to look like Edge on Windows, but that still left a lot to be desired. Well, all of this is no longer an issue since Jordan Cohen, an Xbox Cloud developer, said in the Xbox Cloud Gaming Reddit community, quote, hey everyone, We've just released a set of performance improvements on Xbox Cloud Gaming for gamers playing via browser on Linux and Chrome OS devices. You can expect a higher resolution and smoother streaming experience. These changes also complete a long journey of upgrading our browser gaming experience to a different streaming technology. You should now have a more consistent experience in the browser no matter what device you use. To get this working on Steam Deck, go into desktop mode, install Chrome for the Discover Store if it's not already installed, and then open up the console, which is your terminal app. From here, enter this command and hit enter. This will give Chrome access to your controller. Now, launch Chrome and head over to xbox.com slash play. From here, you can sign in and start playing. To add Xbox Cloud Gaming to Steam, right click on Chrome and add it to Steam. Then go into your Steam library and find the new Chrome entry. Right click on it and then edit the launch options. At the end of the launch options, add the following. And now you should be good to go. Gardner Bryant does not endorse the use of cloud gaming services and you do so at your own peril. All right, next up, Linux market share on the Steam survey has made another small but significant gain in October. Slow, steady growth that is welcome to see in my book. SteamOS Hollow now accounts for just shy of 25% of all Steam for Linux users. 25%, that is super impressive. Compare that to Ubuntu 2204, which comprises 12 and a quarter percent, Arch at 9%. Manjaro at just about seven, and the flat pack version of Steam rounding out the list at about five and three quarters. SteamOS Hollow is the most popular named distribution on this list by a country mile at this point, and that's huge. And if we look at the video card description section, we can see that AMD Custom GPU 0504, which by the way, is the Steam Deck's custom GPU, comprises 25.01% of all GPUs. Interestingly, that tells me that about 1% of Steam Deck users have installed another distro on their device, not SteamOS. Now that's just the Linux hardware survey. If we look at the full hardware survey, we can see that about one third of a percent of all Steam users surveyed this month have the DEX CPU, up by 11 tenths of a percent. So what do these numbers mean? Well, Valve's not including the SteamOS Hollow Linux distro in the Linux count on the main survey for some reason. But since we know that SteamOS makes up about 25% of all Linux usage, we can deduce that 0.32% of all Steam users are running SteamOS. That number is identical to the number of Steam Deck GPUs in use. When taking this number as a whole, it doesn't seem like there's a significant portion of Steam Deck users running Windows exclusively on Deck. And that's kind of big news. That means that SteamOS is the de facto standard for gaming on this handheld. And if Valve can make significant inroads with SteamOS, then we might see more hardware from Steam, maybe something dedicated under the TV in the future. So that's enough speculation. Now, before we get to the software updates for this week, I've got to ask you a question. 
Are you enjoying this video? Why not like that smash button and pinch that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the cool stuff that we're doing here on the channel. When we get to 100,000 subscribers, I'm gonna be giving away a Steam Deck. So get subscribed so you don't miss that. And thanks. All right, next up, we've got some really exciting stuff. According to SteamDB's creator uh, at the XPaw, Valve is apparently working on peer-to-peer -peer content transfer between Steam clients. This is a huge deal for folks who already have many of their games installed on a PC who also need to download their games on their Steam Deck. Instead of having to download the game from the internet, which for most folks is incredibly slow, this in-development feature could allow any PC running Steam to serve whatever game files they have to other machines running Steam. Not only would this save a lot of time, it would also help folks who are suffering from an unethical ISP that charges for bandwidth. But one thing that would be really cool to see, and this is pure speculation on my part, would be once this software is in place, if Valve could allow games to do a Nintendo DS style download play, where a game you have installed on your PC or a deck could give access to a game to another player who doesn't own the title over your network or maybe over an ad hoc Wi-Fi situation so that they could play a match of a game against each other. That would be excellent. Now, obviously game developers would need to actually uh, update their titles to support something like that. And also those would be temporary game files, but it would be awesome to see nonetheless. And I really think Valve should get on that. All right, next up, it's been over a week since we've done a Steam Deck news video. And in that time, there have been several small beta updates. First, on October 27th, there was an update which shipped several new features. The updated big picture mode is now available for testing. This is the new deck UI, but it's on the desktop and we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Added login flow that supports new QR code functionality. Collections view can now show more than two rows of collections and allow scrolling. Reduced client load times for users with large game libraries, which seems like something they say every release. Reduced size of the Steam client download. Fixed incorrectly sized Discovery Queue UI. Fixed incorrect size of main menu in docked mode with 4K displays. Fixed an issue where some dialogues open from menus only respond to touch. Fixed an issue where the switch to desktop mode would not work. Fixed library view on certain resolutions not scrolling with gamepad. And fixed Bluetooth failing to turn on in game mode if it was disabled in desktop mode. And then they also had a few updates and fixes for Steam input. And then on Wednesday, Valve released another set of beta fixes. Fixed some instances where focus was lost. More improvements to reduce login time for users with large libraries. See, I told you. Fixed issue where spotlighted games in the what's new section could not be interacted with. Fixed issues with some trackpad typing. Fixed Steam Controller LB and RB button images. Fixed main menu not adjusting size slash position when adjusting UI scale. Fixed recently exported controller layout templates not showing up in the layout browser. And fixed an issue with sign in refresh UI where the user had already signed in once during the current session. So as you can see, Valve's still marching ahead with brand new updates to the Steam Deck beta channel. Hopefully they'll land in the stable channel soon. Finally, the most incredible news this week, the Deck UI has made its way to the mainline or desktop Steam client beta channel. This is to say that when you subscribe to the Steam beta updates, you can launch Steam directly into Steam Deck UI. This gives you access to not only the new home screen, universal search, the new controller configurator, Steam store, and more, but you can also use the home button and A to open the quick access menu. Now, we have been waiting for a button cord to open the quick access menu with any controller other than the Steam Deck controller itself. We've been waiting for this since day one and it's finally landed. This is absolutely huge news. The problem is right now, the only way to access the deck menu is by opting into the Steam client beta and then modifying your uh, Steam shortcut with the launch parameter uh, dash gamepad UI. You can then launch Steam directly into Steam Deck UI. Granted, this is still in beta and hopefully it'll replace big picture mode soon. So this is one more necessary step on the way to releasing the standalone SteamOS ISO. And once that happens, I'm going to be installing SteamOS Hollow on my living room gaming PC. Get subscribed if you wanna see that. In that video, I'm gonna be doing a review of how it works with VR. I'd love to know what you think about any of the news stories we covered today. All in all, I can't contain my excitement about the future of the Steam Deck and SteamOS, from the UI to its fast growing market share. If you are too, like me, then make sure that you get subscribed to follow all of the news coming out of Valve. 
and thanks. I want to give a special shout out to my friends over on Patreon and my YouTube members. It's because of these fine folks that I've been able to bring you these news videos. If you believe in the work that I'm doing, you can make a monthly pledge using the links below. And thanks. That's it for now though. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day and I'll see you next time.